Today on Real Life, are there contradictions in the Bible? The Hard Questions panel wrestles with a challenging proverb. Also, equipping nations and training children, Michael Staples brings life-changing stories from Scripture Union. And In God We Trust, Making America Safe Again, how we can be used to affect this nation for Christ. Real Life starts right now. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. Amen. And the Bible <laughs> is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black, with my beautiful wife, Terry. Hello. And beautiful Amy Schaefer. And I'm not going to call you, I'm not going to call you beautiful pastor. Oh, <laughs> pastor Jay Gilbert. Yeah. You know this Holy you? Spirit empowering thing was a little over the top. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah, seen yeah, that. Well, like, maybe I was just so full. You just had to shake it out of me. Yeah, I'm trying awesome. to loosen up a little bit, you it's know? Fun, yeah. It's got to kind of loosen, loosen up. Don't be so stiff. Oh, was I? No, I'm, no I'm talking about me. Oh, know? okay. Yeah, Shame. Yeah. There's and a why, song. Do I, why do I do that? And you might have tuned in for the first time to real life and what you're going to hear me say that every time is because that is the basis of the gospel. Those four things mm -hmm. are the basis of the gospel. God loves us. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. And they sent his son Jesus to die for us. Yep. Amen. Then Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to empower us. That's yep. right. And then the Bible is what we build our abundant life upon, the That's truths right. of the Bible. So in just those four little statements, I believe it capsules, capsulates it the is. entire gospel at a very 30,000 right. foot level. Well, it's a declaration. You know, yeah. we talked about the importance of what we say with our words and decrees and declarations. It's a great way to start our morning just to remind us of who we are in Christ. Or whatever time of the day this is. That's true. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> I was reading in Revelations this morning just to repent and remember to do the first works. And it reminds me, like, your intro is like the basics, the mm -hmm. basics of Christianity. Go yes. back to the basics of your faith. You're going to need to, you know, do the work of an evangelist. You're going to need to right. know the Bible. You're going to yeah. be empowered by the Spirit. Right. Develop great friendships around you. Like, mm. we need to go back to the basics. Mm. Well, Pastor, that's the truth. When you, if we focus on the truth, then we know that we will be going on the path that God has ordained for us. Right. Well, he said, mm -hmm. this he said unto the Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, mm -hmm. then you'll be my disciples and you'll know the truth and the mm -hmm. truth will set you free. So those right. four things that you mentioned are a great recipe to set up for success and to win at life. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I love winning at life. You know, and that sounds kind of cocky, doesn't it? But God wants us, doesn't he want us to be winners? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Christians, Amen. so many times as Christians, we say, no, you know, we're just going to suffer through this world mm -hmm. and then heaven. When we get to go to heaven, then it's all going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Jesus said. Thy kingdom come on earth, mm -hmm. like right now, right. like it is in heaven. If you're winning in heaven, we should be winning on earth. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, we're supposed to run the race as if we're going to win, you know, that we see that victory. And so if we, you know, when you do that, you, prepare, you are prepared to be a winner. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to run and just walk when it calls you to run. You know, you're going to go, so, go forward strong. Well, that's why we created this program on Cornerstone Television Network so that we would be able to bring to you real answers. I mean, life has questions. If you haven't figured that out yet, you're just a little baby. Life has questions that need real answers. Mm -hmm. So we want to provide real answers for real life, and that's what this, pro this whole program is all Amen. about. And, you know, a real, a real question today is what in the world's going on in Florida with Irma coming up? Hurricanes. Wow. Yeah. Hurricanes, two in a I row. Mean, massive record-breaking hurricanes in, what, over 500 years? Yeah. And we have two of them. Okay, last night we were at dinner with a group of high schoolers. And guess what the topic of conversation was? What? End times. High and, schoolers. And yeah. high schoolers. I'm wow. talking 17 and 18 years old, and we were not instigating the conversations. Wow. And they were all, they, they know and see 
something is going on with the catastrophes, with fires in California. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's fires in Oregon or something. It, it's like everywhere there's catastrophes going on. And even a little high schooler knows mm -hmm. that I think this is the end of times. Right. Well, and isn't that interesting that they see the signs and they're like, wait, what is going on? Yeah. They're not just looking and saying, well, this is unusual, this is unusual, but they yeah. see how this is something bigger yeah. than just the events itself. Right. And it's the birth pangs. Mm -hmm. It's showing us that all over, something around the world is getting ready to happen. We mm -hmm. were talking about it with the eclipse. Mm -hmm. You know, then we had the four blood moons all throughout right. last year and part of this year, and then now having, like I said, the different storms. It's mm -hmm. a sign that yep. God is on the verge of something. So even though there's a lot of catastrophe going on and people right. are struggling, it's also, he said, look up mm -hmm. for your redemption draw of nine. When you start seeing all of these things start happening, God is on the throne and he's getting ready to do something supernatural. Well, I'm so glad we're doing the 9-11 on Monday. Right. Oh, yes, Y'all make yes, sure yes, that yes. you tune in because that is a day because God is in the move and that we need to, as a country, to mm -hmm. pray fast and repent. That's right. And that's what we have set aside for 9-11 this Monday at nine o'clock noon, Three o'clock and then 6.30, we're going to celebrate. Join us on live, live mm -hmm. on TV, live on the web, live on Facebook, and uh, be part of that. Not a viewer, but a participant. Absolutely. Amen. Don't mm -hmm. come to watch, come to participate. And what you said, Pastor, it stirs me, you know, birth pangs. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't deliver babies, but we both have children. Amen. But these sisters, <laughs> yes. right. they yes. gave yes. birth yes. to That's babies. Right. Yes. But you know, the birth pang is a, is a, a suffering time but the delivery and the reward is so great. Oh, so great. The it baby is. comes mm -hmm. from the birth pangs. Yes. God's going right. to take us through these pangs, these pains, and we're going to get to that Amen. delivery. What's the delivery? Jesus is coming Amen. back. Amen. Yes, he is. Get ready for that. Be ready. Be expected. Look up, the Bible says, yeah. for our redemption draws nigh. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, you guys are all doom and gloomer. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Right. I'm happy. Amy, what's right. next? I'm glad you guys didn't have to know the suffering of birth pains. We <laughs> wouldn't have made it through, and I'm telling you, right? We would not have made it. Jay, would you have made it? I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> no. Never would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> the human race would end. <laughs> I mean, you guys can barely have a cold, I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on. But anyway, I've don't get too, to don't get too hard. <laughs> And all the, I'm gonna, I gotta make friends here. Coming up next, the pastors tackle a hard question. And later on in our next half hour, the World War II hero making headlines for his faith. And this, we're going this, deeper with right. In God We Trust really and learning how to become a Christian citizen. Take a look. Welcome to the hard questions set. Now that's the magic of television, brother. From one place to the next. This is where pastors come together, all these men are pastors, to tackle hard questions right out of the Bible. And there's lots of hard questions out there. I'm the moderator of sort, and on today's panel, Dr. William R. Glaitlin, no, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's always sitting in this spot. Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Pittsburgh, PA. <laughs> Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Church in the Mars area. The Pete Giacalone from the Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. It's football season. It is football season. It's like God. Yeah, Broncos. Colorado. Oh. <laughs> Larry Russell from Shepherd's Heart Ministry. Well, Larry, we're in trouble already. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember when you're in Rome? No, no, I'm just. Yeah, yeah. We're in Pittsburgh, and you know the, Steel, the Steelers are looking good, man. The preseason. When's our first game? I have no idea. Oh, I know. When do you guys know? I think it's Sunday, and I think we're playing. Oh, my mind! I'll tell you in just a minute because okay. it's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about issues. Now, here, here's a question. It comes from one of our viewers. Does Proverbs 26, 4 and 26, 5 contradict? Okay. You may say, what does those scriptures say? Do not, at 26, 5, do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest also you be like him. So there's 24. Now 5, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in your eyes. So for the, for the novice reader of that, they go, 
Well, that's contradictory. Yeah. What do you what, say, Pete? What, what would happen uh, when, when I was studying this, and, and again, at first glance, you could say, oh, man, this does look like it's uh, contradicting, but it doesn't. What I do in, to the reader, that, uh, to pe people who called in, what I'll do when I have problems like this, I'll go to different uh, commentaries, not only commentaries, but different um, versions. Versions, versions, thank you, of, of the Bible. So I immediately went to the Amplified. And uh, uh, the Amplified really cleared up much, but then I went to the New Living Edition. Well, tell us, tell us. And it says this, <laughs> do not answer the foolish arguments of fools or you become as foolish as they are. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they'll become wise in their own estimation. So if you, when you look at it like that, it really makes a lot of sense. In other words, first of all, let's deal with number one. Don't answer the foolish arguments of fools or you become as foolish. Paul was even goaded into this in 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where, where Paul's talking about uh, they, they, they made him feel to be least of all the apostles. And Paul had to go into his boast. And he says, I'm boasting as a fool. He says, I don't want to be here, but you goaded me into this. Um, but I'll, I'll let others do. Jeff. Pastor Chris, what do you got? Yeah, well, the Jewish Talmud uh, kind of teaches us with this that the, this, in these two statements, the first one is, hey, if this is something that can just be left alone, leave it alone. Okay, you can be silent sometimes is the best answer to some things. Don't get sucked into their level. Uh, whereas the second one says, hey, there are certain things that fool may say that you need to speak up right. in a humble way, but in a boldness. I mean, think about Jesus. There were certain things that Jesus wouldn't answer. He wasn't going mm -hmm. to go down to their level, but That's there good. were certain things that they would say. They would say, listen, this is what the truth says. And I think we just got to be careful with our motivations that we don't allow anger to expose the anger inside of us. We get so angry and we throw that word righteous indignation around. But listen, if righteous indignation brings out uh, indignation that's not righteous out of you, it's not from God. Mm. Well, you know, I look at it too in that uh, you can't, a fool asks foolish questions. So you can't really answer a foolish question. You need to deal with the fool. Mm. <laughs> so he's saying, don't worry about the fool, foolish questions. Deal with mm. the fool of the individual. You know? And sometimes yeah. people will ask certain questions yeah. about certain things. And uh, like you, I, I love what you said about with Jesus. You know, a lot of times he wouldn't even go there. Because right. yeah. you know? sometimes they're just going to take you and you end up going down that slippery slope dealing with certain people. And as pastors, well, I'm sure we've all oh, had different and people we've had to deal like with. And you look like the fool. Exactly. Yeah. We had a new uh, Colorado Bronco fan here. What do you, <laughs> That's all right. what do you say, Pastor? Well, I think sometimes we want to bring logic to an illogical situation. And whenever you have a fool that brings in his stuff and you get sucked into it, now you're trying to argue with something that makes no sense to begin with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yes, we can't get sucked into arguments like that. And then on the flip side, there are times when we have to, we have to confront. Yeah. That's all there is to it. We can't let it go by. I want to, ask, I want to expand on this question for my own personal, uh, uh, my personal benefit. The Bible, especially Proverbs, has a lot of references mm -hmm. to fool. Mm -hmm. What does that word mean? What is a fool as reference to, you know, because we got a colloquial definition for a fool. But what does it mean in Proverbs when it talks about it, when Solomon's talking about a fool? Well, I, I personally believe that a fool is an individual that has the knowledge but refuses to apply it. Mm -hmm. I call it an educated fool. It's when you have the knowledge, you have the insight, you have the revelation. You can't be a fool if you're unlearned, you're ignorant. So a fool has to have the ability to know it can look and say, well, I see what that says. It's kind of like if you looked into a mirror, right, right. had a bunch of spinach in your teeth. You see it, but you just leave it there. You're a fool. <laughs> you see what's wrong. You need to make the adjustment. So I, that's my personal definition of what I feel fool is. Yeah, you know what? And, uh, and, and I like to go back to the Hebrew. And the Hebrew, listen to this. The Hebrew word for fool is actually a word for fat. And it is, it's, it's a word for fat. And you think about it. They're so full of themselves that they become fat-headed. Oh. They become stubborn. They're so full there that they're right. No matter what you say, you cannot argue with a fool because they mm. have every answer. Right. They know everything about everything. They're so fat where the Bible says we need to exercise and work out some things in fear and trembling That's so good. that we can be fit and ready That's for good. service. That's, That's good. good. And we're even warned in Paul's teachings to avoid foolish and vain mm -hmm. questions because it, it only brings in disputes and, and division. So there's, there, there comes a time for those who are viewing, when we as a pastor, you ask us something, it's not that we're ignoring you. We <laughs> just don't know the answer. <laughs> no, 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 no answer. What do you think? Well, I just think that, uh, that any time we look at someone that, that is so into themselves, mm -hmm. I had a guy that worked for us one time, and, and he was 26 years old, and 
I said, you know what, you know the same amount that I knew when I was your age, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a fool is somebody that knows everything or thinks they know everything, yeah, and they're yeah. going to make sure that they impart it to everyone else. Now, as pastors, you don't have that relationship. You, there, no one in your world is that way, right? Nah. No, nah, those are just people <laughs> in my it. world. Well, that was a foolish comment that I'm not <laughs> going to answer. Oh, no, man. <laughs> no. We I, love you, Don. I, 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 I'm glad that we got a definition for those, those two scriptures and for what a fool is. Let's not think we know everything. We don't uh, know everything. In fact, we know very little. I, I'll confess, I know very little, very little. I want to learn more. I want to Amen. grow in my faith. I want Amen. to grow in my That's knowledge. Good. I want to Amen. be what God's called me to be. I hope you do too. That's why we do hard questions. Send us your hard question to hardquestions at ctvn.org or simply just call the number on the screen right now. You can call them right now. One of our prayer partners will take the call and give us your question. Mm -hmm. Give us your question. We'll be right back. I'm, I'm a harvest, harvest partner. partner. God has given me so much. And so I'd love to give back to him as a Cornerstone Harvest Partner. My $25 a month is going directly to helping people. I know I'm making a difference. Being a Harvest Partner makes me feel valuable. Together. 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 We can change the world with the power of the gospel. Call now to join the extraordinary team of Harvest Partners with your gift of just $25 or more a month. Life seems more difficult than ever before. Families torn apart, debt ruining hope for a better life. Futures destroyed by addiction and drugs. Even as Christians, we need a breakthrough. We need a miracle, not just for our nation, but for our families, our neighbors, ourselves. Join us for In God We Trust, a week-long special television event beginning September 11th at 7 p.m. Featuring an anointed lineup of Bible teachers and uplifting music each night, this powerful week of ministry will declare spiritual breakthrough over you and your loved ones. The Lord will bring miracles. We just need to be present. Terry, I'm so glad that you brought up the 9-11 campaign on Monday. Well, it's very important. What well, is important, and if you've mm -hmm. not heard about this, we have been going across the nation recruiting people to sign a petition to the mm -hmm. president and to stand together in prayer, fasting, and repentance on 9-11 for the protection and, and for the preservation of our nation. Amen. We feel mm -hmm. that the season has come for us as Christians to rise up and be salt and light in this in this nation. We've been mm -hmm. kind of shrunk back for so long. We sure it's have. It's time for us to move forward mm -hmm. in the power of the gospel and That's let the right. truth be spoken. Mm -hmm. So Monday at 10, let's start at the very beginning at nine o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. on Monday, Eastern time. You join us across the nation, starts at Eastern time. Mm -hmm. We are gonna have an hour of prayer right in the studio like you've never seen before. It's a time of intercession, it's going to be purely going to the Lord. You're going to join us for that, and you're going to join us as, as participants in that prayer. Mm -hmm. What are we praying for? We have eight topics that we're praying for that are specific to this mm -hmm. nation, to this season, and we're asking the Lord's hand of mercy to be extended and asking Him to heal our land and Amen. save. It comes out of Chronicles. This is mm -hmm. all out of Chronicles, and it's, it's God's Word that says, If my people... You know the rest of that scripture. Mm -hmm. We want to take him at his word. We want him to heal our land. So join us on Monday at, 10, at 9 o'clock in the morning live, and you will be part of a movement. It's not, it's not, there's nothing to it other than a movement of God's people to come to the Father in prayer. Mm -hmm. And talk about movements. Scripture Union equips and trains children and adults around the world, and this is a movement that's been going on for 100 years. And 50 years. Dr. Michael Staples is the president of the union here in the United States. Doctor, so good to have you here. With us. Great to yeah. be with you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Yeah. Now, Thank you for coming. Let's Thank set you. up. Let's set up yeah. the part of our part of our initiation. You're a first time guest with us. I am. Yes. Is tell our family about your family, wife, children, where you're from. I'm I'm a Canadian by birth. I'm married. I have a 30 year old son, and we have a 29 year old. 
Uh, my 30-year-old spent some time with the U.S. Army, and now okay. he's teaching history at a Christian school. Okay. And uh, I have a lot of Pittsburgh roots. Yeah. Uh, lived in the South Hills and went to Mount Lebanon High School and oh, Faith wow. Community. And uh, Grove City College grad. Oh, yeah. Wow. I did some seminary here in Pittsburgh, so I bleed black and gold. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go talk to our, our, our friend from Denver. <laughs> now, 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 where's home now, though, for you? I, I live in Florida, but our, our headquarters is in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, so sure. I spend a lot of time in uh, Pennsylvania. What's right. it like in Florida? Is your family there now with yeah, the, with the they storm are. approaching? We're, uh, we're in Jacksonville, so we're just kind of waiting to see what the storm does mm -hmm. uh, before they uh, announce an evacuation. So we'll we'll sit tight and see what what happens. We're just saying, Lord, dissolve that and That's right. send That's it right. back out to sea. Oh, Absolutely. We're in agreement yeah. with that prayer. Well, you know, about Scripture Union, I just am, I am such a fan that you work with children because the Word of God does not go void. And yes. once that seed yeah. is planted, it's there. So tell us about how it works with the children. In, a mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you're so right because there is a, a purity in a kid's heart that allows them to receive the gospel in an unfiltered way. Mm -hmm. They feel love, they don't see color, they don't see, they don't see the things that we see that put up the defenses. And mm -hmm. so we wanna reach children because that is the most receptive time in their lives. Mm -hmm. We've been doing it for 150 years. So mm -hmm. we, we know what we're doing when it comes to children's outreach. Right. We're in 130 countries. We're in places like Northern Nigeria where Boko Haram is just running amok and, wow. and yet we've got over six million children in school programs just in northern Nigeria. That's awesome. We're in places all across South Asia and in closed countries that, that you can't get missionaries in but because of the local involvement they can go into some of these territories that nobody else can get into and mm -hmm. we are are seeing a revival in reaching children and young people that's just really? unheard of. Tell, really? tell, us that. tell us what that revival looks like. You know, and, and so I, I want to leave certain countries unnamed because sure. there's some dangers to it. But we have, for example, in one closed country, we have a hundred staff in that country. And one of those staff will go across the border into a country that's officially closed where you'll be thrown into jail for, for just proclaiming Jesus. Right. And he'll, he'll start up camps for kids, reach kids by the hundreds, then he'll follow up, visit the families. These families see the difference in their children's lives. They get excited about the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he'll follow it up with church plants all across that closed country. Wow. It's just absolutely That's remarkable. Awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. and here in, in this country, we have programs all across the East Coast, different parts of, mm -hmm. of the U.S. And, and I was thinking about my New York director who I was visiting a banquet of hers last year and there was a a young man speaking at that banquet, just 10 years old. His, his mother and father had been going through a divorce the year before, and his two older brothers were reading one of our, <clears throat> our devotional products for, for teens that was designed by Doug Fields. And this 10-year-old was so excited about what his brothers were reading, he said, Mom, I want to read this. And she said, you're too young. No, 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 Mom, I'm not too young. Mm -hmm. So he starts reading this, and the mother and father see our kids are getting into the scriptures. Mm -hmm. There must be something going on here. Oh. So they began to do the devotion with their 10 year old every single day. And they realized if God can do this work in our kids' lives, surely he can save our marriage. Oh, wow. And I sat with that mother and her son after they had called off the divorce. Their marriage was reconciled wow. and that family was kept intact. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Yeah. Now, 150 yeah. years ago, how did this ministry get birth? So there was a, there was a industrial revolution in, in England. London was the biggest city in the world, a million people. There were kids that were working and kids on the streets, kids that were aimlessly wandering about with no sense of hope or direction. And our first leader saw these kids, called them in, began to share the scriptures with them, then he went up to the beaches of Wales, saw that these kids who had no chance of any kind of a childhood, 
and he saw them wandering the beaches and just asked the kids to come over and, and help him write the scriptures with some, some pebbles and, and seashells. And after they did that, they said, well, what's next? And he thought, wow. So he read the scriptures to them. And they said, this is amazing. Tell us. And he was a great storyteller. Yeah. He began to tell them the stories of Jesus and the fishermen. And these kids were just eating it up. And the next morning they were waiting for him. And the next morning, and before he knew it, he had 500 kids. Oh, my goodness. And, and the gospel just began to explode like that. And that was the early beginning. So for 150 years, we have been focused on reaching kids all across the globe. Any idea, now, you know, I know you guys don't care about the numbers, it, but it helps us get a, a, an idea of the scope. But is there any measurement of all of the people that you guys have touched? You, you know, it, it is almost impossible because the viral nature of this. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I sometimes have this conversation with our international director, and she said there are places in the world that we can't even get statistics but it is, it is just taken off. And awesome. so, I mean, I, I couldn't even begin to guess, but it's in the tens and tens of right. millions currently. Right. So if you were to look at what's happened in, in 150 years, it's... You and know. you know, and it's such a domino effect because you're reaching children, but like that mother and father saw the impact on their yes. children, that, you know, because as a parent myself, you, when you see a child change and you see their impact, that's something you want to vote, be a part of. And uh, so you will see there's domino effects to this ministry. Yeah, there really is. Mm -hmm. There really is. Well, Dr. Staples, would you agree that your success is because of the Bible? Uh, ab because absolutely. Of the Bible? We, we, we can't look anywhere else than God's Word and God's spirit That's it. that makes mm -hmm. that word alive and takes that word and just penetrates the heart and mind mm -hmm. and, and brings life and so, hope. And here's the, here, as we close our, our time together, what God does in other children, he will do in ours. Absolutely. And our grandchildren. Yeah. What do we got to yeah. do? Last thought. What do we got to do as parents, grandchildren, and grandparents to get that seed of faith in our, in, in our kids? We need to give a winsome gospel. We need, to, we need people to understand that the gospel brings hope, it brings liberty, it brings mm -hmm. life, it brings joy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, a book of do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. It's a book that tells the greatest love story in the world, mm -hmm. the story of God's love for us, and a love that transcends every problem, every brokenness, every broken family, and, and a message that just reconciles us to God Hallelujah. and reconciles us to each other. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's yeah. eternal, folks. It is. It's an eternal message of the Spirit that He's given to us in written mm -hmm. form. So get into the Word and share the Word with everybody you can. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank Good you to meet you. Come so back. You we'll betcha. be praying for you. We are be praying Thank for you. you. Yes. And we, mm -hmm. we, we, we love to see God's hand at work, mm -hmm. to hear the story of the testimony. And let's go and see what cities found in the news. A detained American pastor is facing new charges in Turkey. Andrew Brunson has been behind bars for nearly a year on terrorism charges. Brunson and his family lived in Turkey for 23 years and led a church in Izmir. He's accused of giving a sermon to Kurds for a special purpose. Police arrested him during Turkey's crackdown on political opposition last summer. We're told there's little to no evidence the pastor plotted to overthrow the government. So far, there's no signs to an agreement to free Brunson. A Bible belonging to a Scottish World War II hero made a historic homecoming. Donald Caskey was known as the Tartan Pimpernel. He served as a pastor at Scottskirk Presbyterian Church in Paris during the German invasion. Caskey stayed behind in France to help establish a network of safe houses and escape routes for Allied soldiers trapped in occupied territory. He denounced the Nazis from his pulpit and hid sensitive information inside his Bible. Caskey's nephew, Thomas Caskey, gave his Bible to Scottskirk Church. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. When you watch the news or mm -hmm. turn on TV, you don't hear things that make you go, wow. Yeah. Make you go, oh. Make you go, uh, bummer. I know. Oh, no. no. I mean, or I kind of won't be fear. fearful. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. But the truth of the matter is, and Pastor Jay, I believe this is more there's more truth to this than there is to the oh no's, is God is at work. Amen. No matter Mighty. what. Mighty. Mm -hmm. 
no matter what's going on, no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're experiencing, he's on the throne and he's definitely in control and he's got a great plan that he's working everything out for our good. Yeah, and we need to remember to pray for that Turkish pastor who has been, you know, well, he's a United States pastor in, in Turkey, Turkey that's been in prison because mm -hmm. of, um, you well, know. They say he was terrorist. Right, but he, but he was. But he's just telling the gospel. Yeah, I right. guess if you're, if you're uh, in an Islamic, radical Islamic state, that is terrorism in some and sense. And I guess so. And in Turkey the, under is, their definition right, of, ter yeah. of terrorism. We need to pray for his protection wow. in return, you know. Mm -hmm. wow. It's a war. I mean, we don't want to think about it like this, folks. We want to think we're living in a land of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are in many ways better th in, than other places uh, which are even more uh, uh, stirred up than where we are. But we're engaged in a war. That's right. This we is a battle. Be thankful, though, too, that we do live in America mm -hmm. and that, you know what, we were in churches on Sunday <coughs> pastoring and we were safe and yeah. we were secure and we really did not fear any opposition at all. We were able to freely get up and proclaim and declare the gospel. Right without fear. So for that, mm -hmm. I'm so Amen. thankful. Absolutely. You know, well, and for also, our rights that right. we have. And the congregation also yes. had that freedom to worship. Yes. And not everybody, so. Pastor Amy, not everybody wants you to have that right. Mm -mm. I know. There's enemies and that's, yes. mm -hmm. that are trying to take those slowly away. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you look at our history over the last generation, this last 50 years, we've seen those rights, those mm -hmm. privileges that we have mm -hmm. always counted mm -hmm. on as Christians slowly be taken back by judicial order. Yep. Absolutely. Supreme, Supreme Court decisions that change the meaning of many things we believe in. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, what was, when we um, heard Franklin Graham, he said that there's something that there's a difference between freedom of worship and freedom to religion. That's and right. we want... You know, everybody says freedom to worship, but that's not really what we want because right. that just encloses us in our churches and that denies us the freedom to worship right. wherever we want. That's mm -hmm. right. The progressive yeah. mind, mm -hmm. which is, a, a, I, I believe, a spirit of, 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 uh, of, dis, of ungodliness, Antichrist, Antichrist yeah. mm -hmm. is, is wants to contain. Yep. So that spirit, that freedom, the progressives, oh, everybody's got some freedom to worship. That means you can do what you want to do in your private place. Mm -hmm. But the freedom for religion as guaranteed by the Constitution says, no, no, no. We have that freedom to do what we want to do because of our faith anywhere we are. Right. Absolutely. Go out onto the streets, go out on television, yes. go on radio. Right. And, and, and we'll talk more about that. This mm -hmm. is, this is, that's, that's that, that slight twisting of words. Absolutely. And yep. people who aren't paying attention go, well, yeah, sure, you know, we mm -hmm. want that. But they don't know what the true meaning of right. that is. That's and so true. That's, it, that's very important. Now, if you've just tuned in for the first time to real life, we say, welcome. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you've tuned in. And we, and we want you to get to know us better. We, we want you to know what our, our mission is here, what we're trying to do. Cornerstone for 38 years have been broadcasting. And real life now for five seasons have been on the air. We want it to have an inside look at the ministry, so we produce a monthly newsletter. It's free. Here's a copy of it. We want to send it to you. So call us on the number on the screen or go online and request at ctbn.org and we'll send you the newsletter for free every month. You get our, our, our schedule of events. You get to see what's on the television, what's coming up on the television mm -hmm. programs, and you'll be in the know. Don't we all want to be in the know? That's kind right. Kind of the inside scoop. Right. So get to the inside scoop. We'll be right back. <laughs> Do you want to know a secret? The Real Life Newsletter is the best thing that I get in my mailbox each and every month. Packed with interesting articles, inspiring testimonials from viewers, and behind-the-scenes news from Cornerstone Network, the Real Life Newsletter keeps me up to date with the shows I love. Every newsletter comes with a handy program guide, so I always know what's on. Call today for your Real Life Newsletter. You're going to love it. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. With the growing threat of terror at home and around the world, now more than ever, Christians need to rise up for healing for our land. On September 11th, 2017, hundreds of thousands of believers are coming together to pray, fast, and repent 
on a special one-day event live on Cornerstone Network. Join us at 9, noon, 3 p.m. and 6.30 p.m., the traditional Jewish hours of prayer, as we take 9-11 back from evil and turn it to a day of victory. Join us on Cornerstone or online at ctvn.org. This is our coaching segment, and I want to uh, invite you to come and join us as we talk and go deeper into the whole idea of Christian citizenship. What are we to do? How are we to impact our nation, you and me? Welcome to Coaching. This is our new coaching set where we're talking about how to dig deeper in for winning. For we talked winning. about winning, brother. Amen. Christians being winners. Hashtag winning in life. Winning in <laughs> life. And somebody at home is going right now, well, that sounds a little cocky. Uh-huh. Amy, is that cocky? No, I think it's a great thing to declare over your life. I am going to win in life. You know that song, watch me, watch me, you know, watch. When you have Christ in you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He always causes us to triumph That's in right. Christ. That's winning. That's winning. Yeah, that's I, right. And really, you can't tell me that Christ suffered and died a brutal death and rose again and broke the curse off of us for us to barely make it in life. It just doesn't make sense. I believe he's empowered us to overcome and to win. Now we have to define what we're winning in, That's Pastor right. Jay. You know, that, that this is not a prosperity message. Right. This isn't that. This is that we're winning in achieving that what God has designed us to achieve. That's right. Only he knows. Well, you know, and there's some people that won, but they were beheaded for the gospel. That's exactly right. You know, there are people over there right now in the third world countries that are preaching Turkey. the gospel that yeah. in Turkey or wherever it might be mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of times that prosperity, that, that mentality of the American dream has kind of crept into the church. Mm -hmm. So we think that winning is getting the house on the hill and the car. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God wants you to have nice things. Nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, how are we taking what we have and what we do to further the gospel? Have you, as Paul said, have I finished the course? Have I finished my race? Have I stayed faithful to the end? And that's the way that we win in life. And that's, that's, my, goal in, that's my goal in life. Yeah. Amen. Is to be able to be steadfast and sure mm -hmm. and effectively accomplish that mission that God has called me to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't done this, and we're going to do this in the later on in, in this coaching uh, process, we're going to go through this for the for uh, quite a while in setting you up for success. You gotta get set up for success. One of the things that's important to do in life is to write a life mission statement, Amen. personal mission statement, where you have, you have decided through prayer, and I would include fasting in this, what, who am I? You know, in the corporate world, everybody has a mission statement. Maybe your churches have mission statements. Mm -hmm. And you can recite that mission statement. You know, ours at Cornerstone is to take the gospel to as many people as possible, mm -hmm. as quickly as possible, in the power of the Holy Spirit and to the glory of God. Amen. Now, that's our mission statement as a ministry. But we need to kind of make those personal mission statements mm -hmm. so that we know when we get that check, when we're, what is this about? Mm -hmm. Is this on my mission? Right. Sometimes you have to adjust your course mm -hmm. based upon what you feel God's called you to do. Write the vision down and make it plain so that he that reads it may run with it. And if you don't have that vision in front of you, if you don't see your life winning, not winning like you guys were saying according to financial successes or gains. I mean, because then where where is the balance? But spiritually, the kingdom of heaven is what righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, like, like spiritually speaking on your inner man, mm -hmm. are you winning it, in the private conversations in your head, in your bedroom you at go. night, are you winning? There you go. You know, 
in your good. marriage when no one else is around and you're out to lunch or you're navigating the hard seasons in life, are you winning there? Are you walking out the fruits of the spirit? Hallelujah. You know, so it, that's what we measure winning on. And so you've got to write it down. I see like what I say over our family, we are a powerful influential family. And now that there's a whole story behind that. I say, I see my kids serving Jesus, mm. loving Jesus. And to me, that is winning in life. That's really well said. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you've thought through this. Yes. You've prayed through this. Yep. You and Buck just didn't make this up last night. Oh no. <laughs> you know, no. it's a process of getting to that place where you can articulate it that mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and be able to be that sure mm -hmm. of what you want to accomplish. That's what I'm encouraging mm -hmm. you and I to do as we go in through our coaching process is to get to that place. That's like a first step. Then what do we know about the Word? And Pastor Jay, we've been working together on a foundation of teaching. That's right. And Pastor Amy too, those eight principles that we've identified that are the basic principles that Paul identified when he was talking in Hebrews, these, these are the elementary principles. That's right. That's what we're basing our, our Bible studies on. And we're going to introduce you to the Bible studies after we get to the first of the year. It's going to become formed and shaped. And this has become something that you can be a part of. But the Bible is part of that foundation for, for Amy to be able to do what she just did. It had to be from a word base. Mm -hmm. It does. You know, I like what you said about vision and mission because that's so important because the Bible says without a vision, people perish. That word perish means they cast off restraint mm -hmm. and they begin to run wild. And right. when you don't have vision, well, when you have vision and you have a mission, you know what to bring into your life. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you can also determine what are distractions. That's right. Because many times distractions yep. are meant to keep you from winning. Right. If you're running down the, the, uh, the lane, running the 400 meter, and then all of a sudden you see someone over there with an ice cream cone, and all of a sudden you take <laughs> off on the track. If you don't know where the finish line is, you just take off and go any direction you want to go. But when you know what God has called you to do, sometimes the attacks in our marriages, <laughs> yeah. the attacks in our finances are distractions are. Yeah. to keep us from winning. That's right. Right. A lot of times that's the adversary's way of keeping so I think having that vision and mission biblically based right. is mm -hmm. so vital so people can finish their course strong. Well, that's where we're getting to in, the, in our real life coaching. It's going to take on its own shape. It'll be available to you on at home for DVDs and a workbook and online on a, a, a website where you can engage online. So that's coming at the first of the year. But that's what this coaching is. We're just starting. So you're seeing one of the very first programs that we're doing in the coaching, in our new coaching set. But today, let's talk about something important today. Mm -hmm. This campaign on Monday, yeah. the In God We Trust campaign, Amen. that is so critical. And you just, as we said earlier, there's so many signs of the times. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for us as Americans to stand, Christian Americans, mm -hmm. to stand up and be Christian citizens? Yeah, Christian citizens, it's our, it's our right, it's our privilege, it's our great honor to be a Christian citizen. You know, I, I had both grandpas in World War II, POW, prisoner of war, missing in action. My father was in Vietnam. Like people fought and died for us to live in a free country. And Jesus fought and died for us to live Amen. free as a believer. Mm -hmm. So being a Christian and being a citizen is a non-option, yeah, should right? Be. I mean, it should be a non-option. I can't imagine sort of checking out on country and just serving God in a little bubble. I think that needs to overflow into our citizenship. Pastor? And the only way for evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the reality is part of being a Christian cit citizen is mm -hmm. that we are the salt and we're the light. And you know, as you've been talking about prayer, fasting, and repentance, mm -hmm. the word repentance has been heavy upon my spirit. Because, you know, a lot of time we look at the world and we say, well, man, the world's doing wrong. We see homosexuality on the rise and this, that, and the other. But judgment begins in the heart and in, in the house of God. And I believe in this season as we repent mm -hmm. as the church, I don't want to look at the world and say, well, you're the reason why America's the way it is. Mm -hmm. We need to stand up. We need to repent. We need to be salt and light again. We need to be the vessels that God's called us to be so we can make an impact. Our children need it. Our teens need it. Our marriages need it. We need to be mm -hmm. the salt and the light in the U.S. of A. Well, I'm a baby boomer, so I came out of the 60s and 70s. Well, <laughs> since then, I'm still here. But the baby boomer generation, you know, we as boomers, and I'm talking to many of you are baby boomers too, we had this whole Vietnam protest mm -hmm. experiences, and I had experienced Jesus through the Jesus People Movement in the 70s, and 
and God brought me through those seasons. And I, as I was going through that, you know, the nation was at, in, in turmoil mm -hmm. in the 70s with President Nixon and all that mess that was going on. But I got to tell you, Water I've game. never seen anything like now. I've never seen ever in my, in my life anything like now where people are against each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and even Christians, mm -hmm. even oh. people who love Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, are so <laughs> polarized by, by politics. Yes. Which to me is, 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 is a distraction of the devil mm -hmm. right. because there's nobody that we agree 100% with mm -hmm. and nobody that I disagree with 100%. Mm -hmm. So we've got to find the truth in the middle. But as citizens that are led by the Spirit of God, we need to say, okay, I don't care what the voices of politics or mm -hmm. lobbyists or mm -hmm. whoever say, I know what the Bible says. Yeah. And when right. things come up that I believe are wrong, I need to let my voice be heard. Yeah. And we've been sitting back, waiting for somebody else to do it for all of these years. Mm -hmm. And now I believe the millennial generation is going to come up and just fire us up. Right. You know, they're going to come, they're, they're no mess around generation. You yeah. know, they're going to come up, they're going to be empowered by God and they're going to come forward in, in strength. Yeah. And I, I just, I just sense that I'm encouraged by that. Mm -hmm. I want to make, I want to make something available to you. I wrote a book called how to make America safe again. It's a, it's a book. I pickpocketed the name for president Trump because you know, we'll never make America great until America safe. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we'll never make America safe until we raise up those walls of spiritual protection mm -hmm. that are around the nation, the hedge of God around the nation that we have had. And, and for 240 years or thereabouts, God has protected us. Mm -hmm. Look at our history, guys. I know. Look at the, the, the attacks that we've had. Look at the giants, the world conquering giants that have come against us and God has miraculously saved us. So this book's about that, identifies two enemies to our freedoms and what we do to, to fight against mm -hmm. them, not naturally, but through prayer. There's 10 prayers in here that turn the tide. Yeah. So I want to give this book to you along with our, our brand new DVD. It's seven presidential prayers that saved America. Mm -hmm. There are seven presidents had the courage to call for a day of prayer, fasting, and repentance. It hasn't happened for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. So these are stories from Bill Federer who still tells the stories and the only way he can tell them very dramatically, <laughs> very beautifully, and we want to give this to you and a copy of this brand new book with your gift to this ministry of $25. So won't you join us in that? What's the $25 for? Well, it helps us to take the gospel out. Mm -hmm. It helps us to go out with the solid word of God, what you've been watching here. And if you continue to watch, and if you've been watching this for a long, long time, you say, how can I help? Well, this is one of the ways you can help. Give you something that'll help your family and then you're helping the ministry. Planting good seed in good ground. Call us right now. Our, our, our prayer partners are standing by, 888-665-4483, and help us take this next step. That's the kind of stuff, guys, that when we rally together, on Monday, hundreds of thousands of people will be joining us online. We had 110,000 awesome. sign the petition. All right. So online, on the air, awesome. and through different connection points. We even have a town hall phone where there'll be thousands on the phone wow. connecting to us on our live program. Be one of those people. Participate with us in this campaign, purely a grassroots campaign. Mm -hmm. It's not an organization. It's just people who believe the same thing and say, we're going to pray. We're going to fast. Fast on Monday. Ask the Lord, put something aside on Monday mm -hmm. and then come to him with us together and let's cry out to him. Mm -hmm. Let's make some declarations, Pastor, mm -hmm. of God's sovereign power mm -hmm. in our land. Amen. And not just par spectate, participate, right. fast, repent and pray. Yeah. I think that's so important, Don, that everybody that's tuning in, that you're willing to participate in this event and ask God, Lord, where do I need to make the adjustments in my world that I can see a healing come to our land? See, I know there are millions and millions and millions of Christians that say the same thing we're saying. Yes. They feel the same exact way. Mm -hmm. They think that this is the, what we're saying is the truth. And as they get the opportunity to stand together, mm -hmm. they will. Amen. Yeah. As they understand that our nation is at risk yes. Amen. and that we must rally together, mm -hmm. not for our sakes, not just for our kids' sakes, not just for our grandkids' sakes,
but for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the gospel will be propelled from this nation around the world, as it has been for the last 150 years. Amen. We just talked about a ministry from England that has come to here that will fulfill the Great Commission and see Jesus come back. That's what we're working for. Right. That's the race we're running. We want to finish that race and we're all going to be winners. It's okay to be a winner. <laughs> Amy, what's coming next? A prophetic word on Cornerstone healed a woman in pain. Take a look at this testimony. Where there is hope, there is faith. Where there is faith, miracles happen. And miracles happen when you pray. My most recent experience is proof of that. I had been suffering very badly with hip pain for quite some time. Because the pain has been so excruciating, I've been walking with a limp. I needed a miracle in my life, more so than ever. When turning on Cornerstone Network, Joel Grantham was on there praying. He put his hands on the screen and told anyone who is watching to do the same if they are in need of a miracle. So I placed my hands on the TV and began to pray with him. As I prayed, I began to feel a burning, tingling sensation in my legs. The pain was going away. I began to walk and move around so much better than before. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of faith and for providing me with one of your all-powerful miracles. I just love that story. I love the stories mm -hmm. of God's touching lives, mm -hmm. supernatural touching of, of people who, uh, whether they're sick or whether they're in a relationship that needs to be healed, whatever it is, mm -hmm. God's hand's not short to us, Pastor. That's mm -hmm. right. And what I love is that the gospel is always going out from here and that it's uncompromised preaching. That means that there's uncompromised power. That's Amen. right. And Amen. think about how many stories are out there like that that we haven't That's even right. heard That's from right. yet. Mm -hmm. Just story after story about maybe they prayed the prayer of salvation, maybe God touched them, healed them, God restored a relationship. I mean, mm -hmm. the stories and testimonies could go on and on. <laughs> and I find it fascinating that when God gives a word, it's not, it's not, to a, it's not time restrained. You yeah. know, like right. our program goes on different times throughout yeah. the day. Right. And that word still applies to whenever you're watching yeah. it because God's anointing is not time, mm -hmm. time driven. Mm -hmm. his, his is Holy Spirit driven. I just mm -hmm. want to remind mm -hmm. you, Jesus really loves you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He really does. When you hear that, I don't think I could ever hear it too many times, but Jesus loves you. God loves you. Yes. God loves you. He cares for you. He knows who you are. Now that's the beauty of it because he knows who you are and he still loves you. He knows what happens in that mm -hmm. private time. And just like Amy, you said, in the private time, mm -hmm. when it's just you, mm -hmm. when it's just you, yep. that's where you know whether you're winning or not. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. And that's where God knows you and he knows me. And in spite of those things, I know we all got things in our lives. We go, Lord, we don't want that. We want to help us from that. Take that right. from me. I want to throw it away. We all have those things. We do things. We say things that we wish we didn't say or do, mm -hmm. but God still loves us. That's right. mm -hmm. And what the devil wants to do, and Pastor Jay, this is his, one of his favorite tricks, is to say to us, well, that's true for everybody else, but you, you're especially bad. Yeah. That's you know, right. mm -hmm. He does. He, that, doesn't, that doesn't fit for you. Mm -hmm. Well, like they say, that's why we call the devil a liar. Yeah. That's right. Call me a liar. You know, Not we got to get back devil. to the word of God because the word of God is a strong tower. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put your mind on the word, it doesn't matter uh, what the adversary says. It doesn't matter what's coming against your way. The Bible says that the word of God shaped the world. So that means everything in our life right. is mm -hmm. subject mm -hmm. to the word of God. And one yeah. word can change any situation in your life today. And that he is a liar in yes. that he takes, he's very subtle. Yes. I think that we forget that he knows how to twist words mm -hmm. and that you need to know God's word Amen. and be reminded that God loves you. I mean, like he's your biggest cheerleader, you know? Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to be 
feeling bad about yourself or questioning how he loves you. And the devil is the accuser of That's the right. brethren. That's exactly right. right. So if you're feeling accusations and accused and put mm -hmm. down, that is not the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He comforts. God Amen. comforts, mm -hmm. brings peace, mm -hmm. brings mm -hmm. hope, brings joy, brings restoration. So any other thought is not of God and you just say like Jay said, not today, devil. Not I know today. your tricks. That's I'm right. awake and aware and I know who I am. I am a daughter or a son of the Most High God, period. That's Amen. right. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's the way uh, what we call spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. What Amy and Jay and Terry describe as spiritual warf warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go out with a sword or a gun and, you know, get out in a big battle on the street. This is a battle inside our minds. Mm -hmm. That's right. It happens inside our minds, and that's where the ground battleground is. And so we have to make our minds good ground mm -hmm. for the gospel, for the truth. Amen. And the only way to do that is to restrict what goes in and protect it. Mm -hmm. You got to protect it. You got to reprogram it, and that's what uh, that's what real life's about: providing those real answers for real life that help us reprogram our mind. It's uh, it's a spiritual process, guys. It really is. It is. God does it. The more I go in my faith, the more I realize I'm not doing much. God's doing everything. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it's really God. Really, mm -hmm. seriously. We just get out of His way and let Him take over. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we get out of His way and yeah. let Him take over. It will blow your mind to what he does in your life. When you say get out of God's way, are you meaning to surrender? Tell, explain what yeah, that surrender. might mean to some of us. Well, surre mm -hmm. surrender is, 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 is true. It's just don't think, don't allow your mind to be the dictator of the truth. Mm -hmm. Your mind doesn't know the truth. I don't care if you've got a PhD in physics and, and, and you've been studying forever. You don't know the truth. The truth's in the book. Mm -hmm. Amen. And until you put the book in, the mind, in your mind and let the spirit bring it up, you're in the way. Because mm -hmm. we've been programmed by culture and by all kinds of things to think a certain way. We've got to change the way we think. Yep. And the way we think has to be changed with worship and praise and study and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let the, the mm -hmm. word war, wash over you. The Bible even mm -hmm. talks about praying in the spirit, which is, which is praying in a, a heavenly language that helps mm -hmm. your mind to be mm -hmm. renewed renewing yourself by praying in the Spirit. We, we, there's so much to talk about. You, you, what it, we do it every day. We mm -hmm. invite you to come back and be Amen. part of tomorrow's right. program on Real Life. Join us every day. Set your DVRs. I was going to say VCR. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been no. That's, that's the boomer coming that's out of you. That's the boomer. <laughs> Set your DVR and record and don't miss an episode Amen. of Real Life because it will change your life through the power of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. That's right. And we, we, we build everything we, we, we do here based on God's Word and based on the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. based on the power of prayer. So I just want to remind you, on Monday morning, don't miss Monday morning, 9 o'clock on Cornerstone for our Signs and Wonders program. Speaking of praying, we're going to close the prayer. We always close our, our program in prayer. All have called in. Mm -hmm. And we just want to stretch your hand out towards us at home. If you're at home, just as you saw that testimony, stretch your hand out towards your TV or your mm -hmm. iPad or your, or your computer. And let's just pray together as we close this program. Hallelujah, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for these needs, Lord. Thank you for these families, members, Father. We thank you for your touch of your spirit, God. You are mighty. Your love is extended towards us. Lord, we receive your love in the powerful name of Jesus. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.